companies tonight, folks. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And a wonderful day today, fellowship with the family. And uh, I want to thank Michael. I want to thank Kevin. Uh, and James went also, James Bracey, uh, to take these boys out camping uh, over the weekend. And uh, they worked so hard. And uh, I, I tell you that without young men like yourselves, this wouldn't happen. And so I, I am very thankful for them and all the work that they put into this. And thank God everybody that got to go also got to come back home. Amen. <laughs> and praise the Lord. But to take your weekend and, and Izzy, you know, to, to let your husband go and uh, to, let your, to take your weekend and, and to dedicate it to these boys. And, and boys today, they need to learn how to camp and they need to learn how to set up tents and how to do a campfire and how to chop wood and how to work together and how to have camaraderie and how to, and, and just praise God and to learn about nature and learn about God's creation and learn about the Lord. And uh, so appreciate that so very much. Not a camp out unless you have rain. Everything was good until last night. The rain came and everything got wet for them. And uh, I don't, I've only been, I remember this, uh, of all the years we've gone camping, I think, Michael, uh, that there's only been one year it didn't rain. <laughs> only one year it didn't rain. And, and, uh, and so uh, I don't know. It's just the way it is, isn't it? Amen. All right. Uh, the book of uh, Judges, praise God. Um, we're going to go to chapter 3 in the last verse. I know you folks have heard of Shamgar. Let me ask you this. Anybody here not heard of Shamgar? I'm not talking about Shamgar Deathridge. I'm talking about Shamgar in the Bible. Amen. Anybody not heard of Shamgar? All right. Don't be afraid to say I've never heard of him. That's all right. Uh, Shamgar. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, verse 31 of, of chapter 3 of the book of Judges. Praise God. I, I'm, I'm tired in body tonight, but I, I pray that the anointing comes upon me. Amen. I pray for the unction of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Uh, by the way, before I get into this here tonight, Tyler, my wife was right, Tyler, she babysat Tyler and, the, and all those brothers and survived. I remember when I met my wife and she, she would babysit. I know Tyler's mom and dad and, and uh, from JSM. And so Tyler was the youngest of the boys. And it's amazing and a miracle all the boys are still alive today. I mean, they were boys, if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, rough and tough boys. And, uh, and so sure enough, it was uh, Ronnie Trostler, Tyler's dad, that prayed with me all night long. They, my wife and all the boys, everybody, uh, Vicki Trostler, they were all at a kid's camp. And so I was at Ronnie's house, and, and, uh, and so I wanted the Holy Ghost, and I was new to all this. And so he, we got in the kitchen, I, I sat on the stool, and he just prayed and prayed and prayed over me. I didn't receive it that night, but it wasn't long before I did receive it, amen. I think I got four hours of sleep that night. And I felt like the next morning when I got up, I had to get up like 5.30 in the morning to go to work. And I tell you, I felt like I'd had 12 hours of sleep. I felt the presence and the power of God all day long. Amen. All right, chapter 3 of the book of Judges and verse 31. After him was Shamgar. He was a judge now. Shamgar, the son of Anath, and who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox goad or a stick. Okay, an ox goad or a stick. And he also delivered Israel. Uh, tonight, if you give me just a little bit of time, uh, I, I want to minister on the thought of Man with a stick, amen. A man with a stick. Praise the Lord, Jeffrey. I don't know. You can go inside this room right here, and there is a, a bookshelf there. There should be a stick in there. Okay, see if you can find one in there, amen. I, I want to give you a little bit of a an example of what I'm talking about. Even though this ox goes about oh eight to ten foot long, I don't have one of those. Um, but it, there, maybe there's a stick in there. Maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes I think things are where they're supposed to be. Let's see if he comes out. Yeah, there's a stick. All right, amen. You see that right there? Now, come here, Jeffrey. i got to do something with you. No, just kidding with you. It's all right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I want to talk about tonight a man with a stick. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if God can use a donkey, if God, if God can use a whale, <laughs> if God can use a man that has a stick, 
God can use you and me. Amen. God can use you and me. Father God, I pray for your help and your blessing tonight. Although I'm tired physically, God, I pray for the unction, the anointing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come Holy Ghost. Anoint these lips of clay. Help me to minister, God. Give us ears to hear and to receive of thy word that you might help someone tonight, Father, I pray. Oh, I thank you, God, for the time of worship. I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you for these wonderful folks that have made their way out here tonight that desire to be in church in the house of worship, the house of prayer, house of God. I thank you, Father. Bless them, I pray. Help us, God, I pray. We must have your presence. We must have your anointing, Father. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. Oh, tonight, let me talk a little bit about uh, a man uh, with a stick. Many times we have a tendency uh, to take a character of the Bible and make them into something really that they're not. And we put them out there in a place where really they're unreachable. We think about this. Uh, I mean, if they're unreachable, then how can I possibly be like that person or be like that or do that or, or to be used of God in that capacity? And we ask the question, how could I ever be somebody like an Abraham or somebody like a Moses? How in the world can I ever be something like a David or even the Apostle Paul? But listen, I want you to get this here tonight. Most of the people that God used were ordinary people who did amazing exploits for God. They were ordinary ordinary people like you and I that did amazing things for the Lord. Just for instance, like Shamgar, he was just an ordinary guy that was used greatly by God to deliver the people of Israel from the hands of their enemies. A man with a stick of all things. He didn't have guns or bombs, knives or cannons. He didn't have a bunch of people with him. No, he was just a man with a stick. Think about that. That's crazy that God can do something like that. But see, that's what God can do. God can do what we think is impossible, but with God, he makes it possible with the spirit of God with the presence of God with the grace of God with the anointing of God God can do this Gideon was just an ordinary man actually Gideon was hiding from the enemy threshing wheat amen but God called on him David was just an ordinary old shepherd boy on the back hills of Israel Simeon was just an ordinary man waiting for the consolation of Israel Elijah was just a man with a nature like ours the Bible said but he prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years and then he prayed again and and there came a, 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 just an outpouring of the rain a, a, on that dry parched land. Hannah was just an ordinary woman, but she had a Samuel who was a great prophet of God. And Mary was just an ordinary girl, but she was used by God to give birth to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What I want to encourage you tonight by saying, God uses ordinary men and women to do extraordinary things for him. God can use you and he can use me and he can use this ministry. He can use this church to do great things for the kingdom of God if we believe God by faith and allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Now let me ask you here tonight. What was it that Shamgar had? Well I know you say pastor you said that he had an ox gold. That's right. He had an ox gold but he had a stick. In other words that's what it was. Basically Basically, it was just a, a, a long stick. It was about uh, 8 to 10 foot long, something like that. Uh, Shamgar was just an ordinary man, an ordinary guy, just like people like us that had faith. Not only did he have a stick, but he had faith. Now, you know that faith can do great things with a stick. Amen. I want you to get that. Faith can do great things with a stick. Amen. Uh, for Shamgar to fight the 600 Philistines, uh, he must have had faith. He, he had faith not in himself, but he had faith in the Lord. And there is a difference. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So Jesus, he's the source, the source and, the, and the completer of my faith. And, and to get through the battle, your faith's going to have to be in Christ Jesus. you got to keep your eyes on the Lord because there's no way that we can do this without God. I need his touch. I need his anointing. I need his strength. I need his grace. I need his mercy. I need his wisdom. I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I cannot live this life without the Lord. I cannot worship without him. I cannot pray without him. I can't praise without him. I can't preach without him. I can't be the man or the woman of God that God's called me to be without the Lord. And I must have faith in Christ. Shamgar, just an ordinary man who had faith 
Well, let's talk about this tonight. What does faith do? What does faith do? Now, there are three points I'd like to bring out today, and I pray that it will be a strength and an encouragement to you. Number one, what does faith do? Number one, out of our text here tonight, faith stays where you are. I want you to jot that down if you would. If you can remember, write that down on anything, piece of paper on the bulletin, whatever. Faith stays where you are. Now, when the enemy came in, we find that Shamgar, he ran away. No, pastor, he didn't run away. I find that Shamgar did not run. He stayed put. Faith stays put when opposition comes. When the enemy comes in like a flood, faith doesn't run. It doesn't back down. When things get tough, you don't leave, but you hold on to God. You hold on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my beloved, I'm trying to say, what does faith do? Faith perseveres, and faith holds on, and faith continues. Amen. Faith doesn't give up. Faith hangs on. Praise the Lord. There's some things, uh, there's something else that we need to observe about faith, and that is this, that there are many times when faith must stand alone. Notice that, that that Shamgar stands alone. It appears that he stood alone. When everybody else ran, Shamgar did not run. Faith doesn't run from the enemy. We, listen we need saints of God today who know God and won't run when things get tough, when things get hard, when things get hot, when opposition comes. But they'll stand firm on the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and believe God. Hallelujah. Oh, Paul said, at my first defense, no one stood with me. All forsook me, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Then he said this, also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I know that Satan goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Paul was saying, listen, when everybody else left me, when everybody else forsook me, the enemy came in to try to destroy me, but God stepped in. Maybe you might be put in a position where all of a sudden God steps in and God delivers you and God helps you and God saves you and God keeps you. Glory to God. Paul did not run, but he believed in the Lord and the report of God. Oh, my beloved Nehemiah, he didn't run when opposition came to stop him from building that wall. I know half the most of the church, I'm going to say half the church, most the church would get scared and leave. I don't know what would happen in the United States of America if uh, it would risk our life to come to a Sunday morning or a Sunday night service or a Wednesday night service or a Tuesday night prayer meeting. I just wonder if we would still be committed and faithful to God. Then the, the enemy threatened Nehemiah. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take you down. They uh, said all kinds of things to try to put fear into them. But I found this, that he stood his ground. And when the enemy came in with their threats and actually Accusations. Nehemiah did not run. In fact, Nehemiah said this, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. Turn to the person next to you and say, remember the Lord, great and awesome. Remember the Lord in trials, in hardships, in difficulties, when everything seems to be crashing down, falling apart, you wonder how you're going to pay your next bill, how you're going to make the next the meal, whatever it might be. But you remember the Lord, great and awesome. He said, our God will fight for us. That's a man of courage. That's a man of faith. That's a man that believes God. Our God will fight for us. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise the Lord. What are we to do? Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Listen, Jonah said while in the belly of a whale, I remembered the Lord. I remembered the Lord. Let's remember the Lord. There's nothing too difficult for God. Nothing too hard for God. Nothing greater than our God. It's okay to put your faith in him. It's okay to put your trust in the Lord. Depend upon on God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to put your trust in the living God. Amen. Oh, anybody ever heard about Esther? Did you know that there's a woman named Esther in the Bible? That's right. Esther didn't run when it came to saving her people from destruction. She could have run. Oh, but a woman that stood in the gap. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. A woman that trusts God. A woman that believed God. A woman that said, if I perish, I perish. 
Oh, she's going to trust and believe. That's the kind of faith. That's the kind of determination. She believed God, and the Lord was with her and delivered her and her people. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't run when told to bow. Oh, you're going to bow. You're going to burn. Amen. Bow to the golden image. You're going to burn. No, listen. They put their trust in God. They regarded God more than they did their own lives. They loved God more than their own lives. And they, listen, they can turn up the furnace seven times hotter. That doesn't matter. We're not giving in. We're not bowing. There's no need for us to answer. Listen, God will deliver us. He will. I know that God can deliver us, and he will deliver us. But if he doesn't, I want you to serve notice on you, Nebuchadnezzar. We will not bow to your golden image or to the world or to the devil or to sin or to compromise. We're not giving in. Hallelujah. And listen, there weren't three when Nebuchadnezzar looked in that fiery furnace, but there's a fourth like unto the Son of God that was with him. That was Jesus. Jesus. Jesus did not deliver them out of the fire, but he delivered them through the fire. Amen. Praise God. When they came out of that hot, fiery furnace, their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, praise God. You know, God can make things last. You know that? I mean, listen, even the children of Israel, all that time in the desert, 40 years, but their sandals did not wear out. God can make it last. Glory to God. Oh, praise the Lord. I, listen, I got, I got shoes in my, in my, I got shoes in my, let's not bring up that subject, but anyway, I got shoes in my closet that have lasted a long time, but I've never seen, listen, I tell you the truth, I've never seen shoes last so long that my mama has. My mom, I think my mama, if I'm not mistaken, she has shoes that go all the way back almost into high school. I mean, she's got shoes that have lasted a long, mama, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Amen. That's right. Shoes. Amen that can last a long time. God can make them last. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shema didn't run when the Philistines came. Bible said he stationed himself in the middle of the field, defended it, and killed the Philistines. And the Lord brought about a great victory. But let me just say this tonight. There's no doubt that if you're living for Jesus, you will experience opposition. I know the powers of darkness will come against you. The devil will come at an opportune time, the Bible says. But faith does not run from that enemy. No, 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 no. Faith doesn't run, but it trusts God. It stations itself. It believes the Lord. When Elijah went on to Mount Carmel to pray, he positioned himself to pray. Church, we've got to position ourselves to pray. Position yourself to worship. Position yourself to serve God. Position yourself to be faithful. Position yourself, amen, to do battle. You trust the Lord and you believe God by faith. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3 and 12, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Listen to that. You circle that word will, W-I-L-L. -L. You just put your name there. That's right. You will suffer persecution. All those that live godly, every single one of us, amen, that live persecution comes in many shapes and fashions and forms. Don't think it unusual when you suffer persecution. Don't think it unusual when you experience trials in your life. Your faith must be tested and tested and tried. Yes, that's right. Paul said, do not be strong, Lord, and the power of his might. Peter said, think it not strange when you go through the testing of your faith. Other people go through it too. You're not by yourself. You're not alone, but you trust the living God. Sometimes we think the answer is to give up. I know that. I know every one of us probably thought that at some time in our life. I've thought it myself. Or we think the answer is to run away from it all. Just move to a different city. Just get a different job. Just find another church. We think all the answer will be resolved by leaving or moving. But I can tell you the grass always looks greener on the other side. But it's not. <laughs> Somebody else always seems to have it better. I know it seems that way. We like to take the path of least resistance. But let me tell you, it's not any better on the other side. Folks, there may be times when God doesn't want to change the situation, but he wants to change you in the situation. We ask God, change the situation. Make it easier. Make it lighter. Make it Oh, no, God says, no, I'm sanctifying you through this. I'm working in you. I'm working through you. Amen. You're clay in the potter's hand, and I'm shaping, and I'm molding, and I'm going to make you into something. See, it, this, God sees that. Oh, we, we like to be complacent and comfortable and kind of laid back. Don't want to put any effort into it. God says, I'm making something out of you. I'm forming you. Sometimes we pray for God to change that situation, but God's using that situation to change you and I. 
as the song goes change my heart oh God and make it ever true change my heart oh God and may I be like you change my heart we sing the song and we want and desire for God to change us but faith stays where you are it doesn't run from the problem it recognizes it and then asks God to help you in the situation faith says God can doubt says God can't but faith says with God all things are possible Shamgar was just an ordinary man with a stick that stayed where he was amen a stick <laughs> amen <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The next time somebody gives an excuse and says, well, you know, I can't. I don't have the resources. I'm going to say, you run outside real quick. Get your stick. Come back here and we'll talk. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, you know why, Pastor, do you have this stick up here tonight? And not only for a sermon illustration, but just in case somebody falls asleep. Amen. We just want to make sure we all stay within it. All right. Hey, pray, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Just kidding with you. I wouldn't do that. Amen. At least not on camera. All right. Praise God. All right. Okay. So what does faith do? Well, number one, it stays where you are. It doesn't run. It doesn't run away from the enemy. It believes God. It trusts God. Praise the Lord. But number two, what else does it do? It uses what you have. It uses what you have. When Shamgar defeated the 600 Philistines, now think about that. 600, got one man, 600 Philistines. One one man defeating uh, 600 other men, 600 Philistines. But see, Shamgar defeated the 600 Philistines. What he, he used, uh, what he had. And what he had, what he was carrying was an ox gold, okay? It was an ox gold. He said, what in the world is an ox gold? As I said earlier, it was a, a stick that was about 8 to 10 foot long. That's right, something like a walking stick, 8 to 10 foot long. It was sharp pointed on one end to help prod the oxen up, amen? The oxen sometimes, they go kind of slow, and you got to help them along the way so you take the pointy end of the stick and you say come on get going amen I'm talking about oxen all right amen <laughs> Sometimes, you know, they're walking kind of slow, and you got to help them in their progress. Amen. So you take the pointy end of that stick, and you'd stick them and help them to prod them a little bit. You know, sometimes you got to uh, do that with sheep. Amen. Sometimes you got to do that with people. Got to help them along the way. Say, amen, Pastor. That's right. Sometimes we need prodding. I need prodding. God, help me to pray. Help me to be in the Word. Help me to be faithful. Amen. You know, sometimes, I don't find the human nature, you know, something like an ox. The Bible said, don't be like the ox. Don't be like the mule. You know how the, the, the characteristics of an ox and a mules they can be stubborn at times I'm not saying that you're stubborn uh, I'm just saying sometimes in human nature we can be stubborn not you but I'm just saying the human nature can be stubborn not you folks I wouldn't talk about y'all like that I'm just saying sometimes we can be stubborn but you know that pastor comes along and he takes that ox goat and he just you know nudges them a little bit and said come on now be faithful I haven't seen you in the house of God not you're not faithful like you once were what's going on what's happening to you oh come on now instead of loving that pastor instead of saying thank you for prodding me a little bit we turn against him someone say amen to that that's right. That's right. Say amen to that. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. But listen, with love and respect and kindness, the Bible said we're to exhort each other. I'm supposed to do this. Help us to be faithful in the things of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we prod a little bit to help along the way. But that ox go to eight to ten foot tall, pointed on one end, and then had a flat, uh, it was flat on the other side, and that was to scrape off the mud and so forth and the grass off the wheels of the plow. And so when the enemy came in, what did Shamgar do? He simply used what he had. He simply used what was familiar to him. Sometimes God wants to use what you have, not what you don't have. If we'll just give it to him, if we'll just give to God what we'll have, if we'll just trust God with what we have, if we'll just believe God with what we have, God can do great and wonderful things. Hallelujah. Oh, my beloved, if we're not careful, it's possible for things to get in the way of God. Mm -hmm. It depends upon this. It all boils down to this. It all depends on the condition of the heart. That's right. You read. You know where I'm going with this, sister. It, it depends on the condition of the heart. If your heart is in it, if your heart believes it, if your heart is for it, amen, you'll find a way. You know the old expression, we say, if there's a will, there's a way. Amen. If there's a way, if you desire to be used of God, if you want to be used of God, if you want to be faithful to the Lord, I know that I know you'll figure out a way. You'll believe God. You'll trust God. You'll find a way. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. If we're not careful, things get in the way of God. Depends on that condition. Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon. You can't have two masters. You'll love the one, hate the other, be loyal to the one, despise the other. Shamgar, notice this. He used what he had. <laughs> I love this. This is incredible. I mean, this is truly a miracle. This is absolutely amazing. He used what he had. He used a stick. That's what he had. He had an eight-foot stick, a ten-foot stick, pointy on one end, flat on the other. He used what he had, and God wrought him a, a great victory. Praise God. Oh, listen, when Jesus was teaching the people, they began to become hungry. You know the story. In the Bible, disciples wanted to send them away. But Jesus said, you feed them. That's right, disciples. Uh, 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 you know, you give them something to eat. And so the disciples said, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. 500 people, probably more than that. Children and women, probably up to 800 people. 8,000 people, I mean, not 500, 5,000 people. Uh, 8,000 people or something like this. Then Jesus, listen, Jesus, the Bible said, we only have five loaves and two fish. Two fish. Five loaves and two fish. Then Jesus said, bring them here to me. Bring the loaves and bring the fish to me. And the Bible said that Jesus, he took the bread and the fish and he blessed it and then he gave it out to the 5,000 or 8,000 that were filled that day that they had, I said they had 12 baskets left over. Think about this. You've got five loaves of bread and you've got two fish. That's it. And how are you going to feed all these people? Five loaves of bread and two fish. But you give it to Jesus. You give him what you have and he takes it and he blesses it and then he gives it out. But not only is that enough to feed the multitude, but just to show you who he is, that he's God and almighty, there's not a shortage, but there's an abundant above, more than you can ever think or ask for. There is 12 baskets left over. That's what God does. Friend, if you give Jesus what you have, he'll bless it and use it for his glory. Give him your life. Give him your time. Give him your all. Praise God. Amen. We want to be stingy on God. I'll give God this much, but that's it. You're cheating yourself out. Man, you're losing it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to wear myself out. Well, listen, if you're going to wear yourself out, I couldn't think of a greater cause than to wear it out for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just wear it out for Jesus. I, I, I'll, I'll, I will sing. We'll sing Sunday morning. We'll sing Sunday night. Amen. Don't have much of a voice on Sunday night. I got a little bit better tonight. But you know, why not? Wear it out for Jesus. Just give it all to the Lord. Amen. Give it all to God. Give my time, my life. It all belongs to Christ. He'll take it and he'll bless it. And then he'll multiply it. He'll use it for his glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some, sometimes the reason God can't bless what we had is because we haven't given, to, given it to him yet. How can God bless what he doesn't have? After the brook dried up, listen to the story. God sent Elijah to Zarephath to the widow woman's house. You know the story there. You remember that? And it was in the middle of a drought. I mean, they were starving to death. They didn't have anything left. It hadn't rained for three years. And it was there that God said that he would provide for Elijah. Sometimes uh, things may not make any sense, uh, but if God told you to do it, you do it anyway. In fact, most of the time, what God tells you to do doesn't make sense. Most of the time, what God tells you to do, you cannot see it happen in your natural eye because it takes faith. Paul said, if you can see it, that's not faith. He said, it's what you don't see, but you still hope for. That's faith. Amen. It's a good thing I'm tired tonight. You understand? If I can't see it, but I still hope, then that's faith. Amen. And so sometimes things may not make sense, but God, if he told you to do it, you do it anyway. You just do it anyway. You trust God. You believe the Lord. You believe God. You believe the Lord. Amen. There's a lot of things that God's told us to do that didn't make sense, but you do it. And the Lord made a way. God will make a way. The Lord will do it, and God will provide. But if you'll walk in that obedience, and walking in obedience to his word is walking in the Holy Ghost. That's what it is to walk in the Spirit. That's what it is to walk in the Holy Ghost. What is it to walk in the Spirit? To walk in obedience to the word of God. That's what it is, walking in the Spirit. The Spirit of God's not going to lead you to do something that's contrary to the Bible. What God has spoken to your heart, you trust him and you believe God. And God will provide. And God will make a way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you. I've told this before, but I'll tell you it again. I was trying to get away from this, but I feel like I need to share this tonight. But living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, my wife and I married going to Bible college, and uh, I had to have a sinus surgery. When I had sinus surgery, I had a setback. I uh, uh, had surgery. I don't know what day it was. Whatever it was, I wouldn't do it again. But anyway, I had sinus surgery, and a few days later, I started hemorrhaging, and I was bleeding. And so I was bleeding to death. I had an artery in my sinus cavity that broke, and so I'm basically bleeding to death. And uh, so I had to go to the hospital and things like this. And I ran up a bunch of doctor bills, ran up a bunch of hospital bills in the hospital for a couple uh, days. Uh, and uh, instead of missing one week of work, I was missing three weeks of work, things like this. Uh, but God provided all the way along. I know that. And so, uh, you know, bills piled up and things like that. Insurance paid their part, but I still had uh, debt. And uh, so I didn't have any money. And how am I going to pay these bills? And so, but I had a I had a ski boat. I had a boat that was in storage. And God told me, he said, I want you to sell that boat. I remember where I was in little dormitories, 11th floor. And I remember God speaking to my heart. And God told me that he wanted me, he wanted me to sell that boat. And so he told me the time. He told me the place. He told me how much. Amen. And so I got it out of storage. I was playing $80 a month on storage. So I would save $80 a month on that storage. And so I took that boat on that particular Saturday, cleaned it all up, put it on the corner that God told me to put it on, and put the for sale sign on there. Amen. Just left it there for the day. Later on that day, I got a call. Somebody lives in North Baton Rouge that never passed that way before. They were passing through that part of town that day. God knew that. How many knows that God knew, knew that? Amen. Amen. So I did what the Lord said, and then most people passed by, and they saw that boat, and they said, can we take it out for a test drive? I said, you sure can. They took it out for a test drive, came back, said they would buy it. I sold that boat. Listen, if I had not heard the word of God, if I had not obeyed the word of God, if I had not listened to the word of God, I'd have never put that boat out there. Now, those people who had never seen it passing by that day, and they would not have bought it. You know what I did? I took the money, and I paid off the debt. Glory to God. Just like the woman with the creditor and her two sons that took the oil, the vessels that God said, pour that oil that you have until all the vessels are filled up. And he said, sell that oil and pay off the debt. That's exactly what happened. I'm just trying to tell you, sometimes the things that God says may not make any sense, but God knows what he's doing and God knows what he's talking about. Hallelujah. All right. Where are you all? Amen. All right. Praise God. And so we find here. Amen. We're all right. We're, we're doing good, church. Amen. And so we find Elijah asked uh, this widow woman to give him something to eat, and all she had was a handful of flour, a little bit of oil in a jar. Elijah told her to make it for him first, and then for her and her son, put God first. In other words, use what you have. It may not mean much uh, to the human intellect. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if we'll just trust God with it, he can take it and bless it and multiply it. And the Bible says she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, the prophet of God. And she and he... And her household ate for many days. Can you say many days? Many days. Can you imagine that testimony? Everybody else doesn't have any food. And she's telling them, every time I look in the bin, there's flour in the bin. I make food. I make biscuits. I mean, I'm talking about biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and sausage gravy. Some of y'all getting hungry tonight, I can tell. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, man, I'm talking about good stuff. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah, just give it to God. Use what you have for his glory and God will take it and bless it. Amen. Multiply it. Praise the Lord. I mean, think about this. Think about this. David used a slingshot to kill a Goliath. Uh, really now, let's, let's talk about this for a moment. Really, a slingshot, just a, a, a slingshot. I mean, a leather strap with some leather leather strings, if you would. You know, just think about this. I mean, David came to check on his brothers to see how they were doing and give report of the battle. And so there stood a giant Philistine by the name of Goliath. You know, Goliath uh, defined the armies of God. And David used uh, what he had, what was familiar with him. Saul tried to get him to put on his armor, but that wouldn't work. It hadn't been tested. David didn't uh, know how to use it. Uh, what did David do? do he used what he had he used what was familiar to him he didn't have any fighting experience he wasn't a soldier in the military army he didn't have any weaponry but there was something that he had and that is this not only did he have a slingshot but he had faith in the God of Israel and David stepped out by faith with a sling in one hand and a stone in the other and defeated a giant. The victories of his past gave him confidence of the victories of his present. Amen. Samson used, listen to this, a jawbone of a donkey to defeat a thousand Philistines. A jawbone. That doesn't make sense but he used what he had 
And what Samson had was the faith in God, the anointing of the Lord, the power of God, the spirit of God. Hallelujah. You know what a church is when it has the spirit of God upon her, the anointing of the Lord, the power of his presence, the unction of God, a church, oh, that has power from on high. My Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing can hold her back. Nothing. Listen to me. In the New Testament, all the Roman legions, all the religious could not stop the church of the Lord Jesus Christ when she had the power and the anointing upon her. Samson in the Old Testament in the book of Judges chapter 14, 15, and 16 is a type of the church that had the anointing and the spirit of God and he used the jawbone of a donkey and defeated a thousand Philistines. Gideon, we just talked about Gideon. Y'all remember that, right? Gideon. Y'all remember, don't you? That was just last Sunday night. Was that last Sunday night? Just checking. All right. <laughs> Gideon, Gideon used pitchers and trumpets with a torch in it and 300 men to defeat the Midianites as numerous as the sand. Not 32,000. I'd be like, Lord, Give me those 32,000. We can do anything with 32,000. God says, no, that's too many because what will happen is they'll receive the glory rather than me. And I don't share my glory with any man. And so here it is. Here it is. Instead of 32,000, his army, his church is down to 300 now. And get in with pitchers and trumpets with a torch inside to defeat the enemy of God. You may not have much, but you can use what you have. What do you have today? We may not have much, but we can worship him. We might not have much, but we can pray. We might not have much but we can seek his face we might not have much but we can obey the Lord we might not have much but we are we can have a willing heart we might not have much but we can be faithful unto God with a right heart and a right attitude and God can do great things with you hallelujah you can actually be a blessing to somebody else <laughs> Shamgar had a stick I mean, think about this. He used what was in his hand. What's the stick represent? What's the ox gold represent? It represents the word of God. That's what it represents. Amen. It represents the word of God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word will get down to where you live. It'll get in your backyard. It'll get in your house. It'll get down to where nobody else knows but God, the word of God. Praise God, he used, he used a stick. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted of the devil, what did Jesus use? Jesus used what? The word of God. And he said, it is what? Written. Hallelujah. He went to the word. <laughs> yeah. Jesus shows us by example what we are to do also. Remember now, he's God in flesh. Right? He's God in human flesh. And so he's the word personified. Christ came to lead us and to show us by example how to live the Christian life. How to pray. How to worship. How to walk. How to be faithful unto God. And he shows us here how to do spiritual battle or spiritual warfare. It is written. I go to the book. I go to the word. I go to him talked about that this morning didn't we quoting the scriptures of the word of God Shamgar was just an ordinary man that used what was in his hand he used a stick and the God of Israel blessed it and 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 and, and brought Shamgar a great victory I mean faith uses what you have listen I don't care I mean I know what I would probably do because my family knows me, but if God is going to use me and, and what I had, if it was a stick, I'd probably go out to the store and buy me a brand new stick. <laughs> I'd probably try to get the best stick that there is out there. 
because, you know, I got to make sure it's got, you know, balance and make sure that, you know, I, I, no, 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 no. See, God didn't ask him for that. <laughs> Just use what you have. Just use the talents that you have. Just use the ability that God's given you. Amen. The stick, I know, represents the word of God, but the stick can represent the guitar, can represent a beautiful singing voice. The stick can represent uh, playing the piano or the drums or the electric guitar or the bass. It, it, it can represent cutting the grass, picking up people in the bus. It can represent reaching children and teaching them on Wednesday nights. It can represent cleaning the church or cleaning the bathrooms or cutting the yard or taking care of painting or taking boys on a camp out or working with rangers and missionettes. The stick, whatever it is, it, it could pertain to your faithfulness and and you being a part of the body of Christ and you lifting up your voices. The stick can be you tithing and giving unto God, helping this ministry. The stick can be you praying and believing the Lord and lifting up one another in the Lord and, and, and interceding and praying for the lost and, and, and praying for those that are sick and praying for your pastor and praying for your church and ministry. Praying for revival, praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The stick can be the Tuesday night intercessor prayer warriors that are able to come here on the third, first and third Tuesdays of each month. Uh, praying and seeking God. And you folks come, whether it's 95 degrees outside or whether it's 15 degrees below with wind and snow on the ground and ice. You are so faithful. Any pastor would be grateful and blessed to have a people like you. I just need to multiply. I need more of you. But the stick can represent us coming tonight and worshiping the Lord. Just being faithful to God. Use what you have. Use what you have. You, you, you give it to God. Use the people that you have. Give what you have to the Lord. See, God can't bless it till we give it. If we're going to hog our life and hog our time, and that belongs to me and that doesn't belong to God. You have missed the entire picture. Most of the Christian world has no idea what it means to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no idea what it means to be used of God. They give portions of their life. They don't think about God Monday through Saturday. Only on Sunday do they ever think of God or think of the Bible or think of spiritual things. Their life is theirs and they do what they want to do, but they never do anything for God. No, 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 no. Your life belongs to God. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. The temple of the Holy Ghost is what we are. We belong to Christ, amen. But I also realize God also uses the weak things to confound the wise. I mean, a stick of all things. First Corinthians 127, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the things that are wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. He'll use an ordinary backwoods guy like Shamgar, and he'll use a stick, to deliver his people from the enemy. So what does faith do? It stays where you are. It uses what you have. And thirdly and lastly tonight, it does what it can. Yes, it does what it can. Faith does what it can, not what it can't. Shamgar did what he could for the Lord, and God honored that and gave him the victory. See, faith does. Doubt doesn't do anything. Doubt never did anything for God. Doubt, listen, we talked about that this morning. I don't want to get into that tonight. But doubt is what hinders and quenches the spirit of the Lord and the work of God and the church of God in the ministry of God. Mary had anointed Jesus and she poured out a, a whole flask of costly oil on his head, a year's worth of wages. Yes, some of the disciples criticized her for doing this, calling it a waste. Listen, giving to Jesus is never a waste. Worshiping Jesus is never a waste. Spending time in his presence is never a waste. Coming to a Sunday night service is never a waste. Being faithful to God is never a waste. Giving your all to God is never a waste. In fact, I want to show you something in the economy of God. The more you give, the more you get. It's when you hold and grudge and, and, and hog it for yourself, you have less. It's when you bless, it's when you help, giving heart, doing for Jesus is never a waste. Spending time in his presence is never a waste or in his word or in worship. You, you, you think people think that this is a waste tonight, that, that going to Sunday night service is a waste. You don't have to be a member of this church to come here on a Sunday night. But see, it's all about my time now. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about what makes, makes me feel good. It's what's comfortable for me. 
And so now we, we've turned it around to where the focus is no longer on Christ, but it's on self. Listen, my Lord, if you're caught up in Christ and you're caught up in the Holy Ghost and you're caught up in Jesus and you're caught up in your presence of the Lord, man, that's what you want. That's what you hunger for. That's what you desire. If, if, if you, it, <laughs> I mean, the more you are filled with the Holy Ghost of God, the more that you want the Holy Ghost of God. The more you're filled with Jesus, the more of him that you want, you want his presence. The more you're filled with Jesus, the more of his word that you want. The more you're filled with Jesus, the more you want to praise him and worship him. What's happened to the church? She's broken. She is. She's no longer abiding according to the word of the Lord in some things, but I'm saying not in all things. What happened to those six-week revivals? Such a hunger for the Lord. Now listen, giving to Jesus is never always. Some of the other disciples criticized her for what she did. Mary, that is. That's all that some Christians ever do is criticize others. But they don't lift the finger to do anything in themselves. Criticize, criticize, criticize. Uh, what are you doing? Criticizing. That's not needed here. That doesn't edify. That destroys. That doesn't build up. That brings down. Listen, anybody can criticize. It takes men and women of real faith to keep a hold of their tongue and keep their mouth shut. Did pastor really say that? Yes, I did. Anybody can criticize. But when we criticize, that's not the spirit of the Lord that has a control of your mouth. That's the devil. Okay? And, and I realize, you can, I know there are people who say, well, I could do things better. Well, maybe you can. Or I can run things better. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. I, I'm not doubting that. I'm not doubting that. But, but this is just where God has called me, and this is what God told me to do. And so... By the grace of God, I'm just trying to do the best of my ability of what the Lord told me to do and to fulfill the will of God for my life. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that all right? See, so I know by our fallen nature, we have a complaining spirit. I realize that. But see, growth and maturity says, look, I've, I've got control of that now. I've given it to the Lord. And so now you don't let your tongue run away from you. Okay? I, I mean, sometimes we have to try to catch it. Put her back in there. <laughs> Isn't that right? If she gets away from you, just <laughs> put her back in there. Stay now. <laughs> it can happen. I don't, listen, it can happen to the best of people. And I don't know that anything's going on here, but there's probably something going on here. Because the human nature does this. All right, let me, let me stop. I need to quit on that. That wasn't even in my notes, Okay. I, I think of the widow woman who gave two mites. Remember the story there? A mite was two copper coins. And Jesus said that of all who gave, this one gave more. Two mites, two pennies, two cents. Why? Because she gave out of her poverty. Okay? In other words, she put all that she had into it. She gave her whole livelihood to Jesus. She didn't have much. The religious would think that she, didn't, she wasn't worth much. The world would think that it's not worth much. But Jesus says it's worth more than all the rest. Why? Because she gave out of her poverty. She did what she could for the Lord. She didn't hold back. She didn't hold back. At the wedding, Jesus had turned water into wine. You know the story, John chapter 2. First miracle of Jesus, his mother turned to the disciples and said, whatever he says to you, do it. The disciples filled the water pots to the brim, the Bible says, and there Jesus turned the water into wine. A miracle took place. The disciples didn't have any wine or the power to turn water into wine, but the disciples did what they could. What could they do? They could obey him. That's what they could do. They could do what Jesus told them to do, and we can do the same. As I close tonight, we can also do what we can for the Lord. Faith does what it can, not what it cannot. I may not have much, but I can do what I can for Jesus. I can do what he asked me to do. I can be obedient to his word. So what does faith do? It says, Number one, it stays where you are. Number two, it uses what you have. Number three, it does what it can. That's what faith does. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? Well, you might say, but Shamgar, pastor, but Shamgar was never mentioned in the book of Hebrews as having faith. You're right. Finally, you got it right. It's true. He's not mentioned in the book of Hebrews as having faith. But in Hebrews 11 and 32, it says, and what more shall I say? 
listing off all the people of faith. But what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of. There was more to say. There was more he could have said. Shamgar was just an ordinary guy with a stick that did amazing and exceptional things for God because he had faith in the Lord. And if God can use a Shamgar, God can use you, and God can use me, and God can use this church. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give him praise tonight. Give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. God can use you. God wants to use you. God wants to use this church. God wants to use you. Glory to God. I want to have a heart and an attitude that says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh, God. I'm available. Think about it. We come up with excuses. We try to rationalize. We try to reason. There's no way I can beat these Philistines with a stick. There's no way I can destroy them with the jawbone of a donkey. There's just no way. That's because we're looking at the natural rather than looking at the supernatural. Because God, there is a way. I'm telling you. Folks, listen. How many here tonight have testimonies through the past in your life how God has provided, how God has met your need, how God has brought you through, how God has healed your body, how God has provided food on your table, how God has given you a job, how God put clothes on your back, how God brought miracles in your life. Yes, yes, God can. I trust him. I believe him by faith. Glory to the Lord. Trust him. I'm available. I'm willing. Hallelujah. Can we just praise him tonight? Can we just praise him tonight? Hallelujah. Would you be willing to give your all to him? Are you willing to pour it out to Jesus? Hallelujah. Just give it all to the Lord where you are tonight. Just where you're standing tonight. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, God. I give you my all, my life, my heart, my willingness. I know that with God all things are possible. I believe the Lord. I believe God. I believe the word and I'll stand upon it. I'll live by it. God is a God of miracles. And I live my life for the Lord. And living this life for Jesus is amazing. The Christian life is wonderful. It just gets better and better and better and better. Because he's a wonderful Savior. Don't you ever get excited about what God, the great things God is going to do? Not just what he's doing right now. Every time that you come to church, I never know what God's going to do. I wonder what the Lord is going to do. I wonder who he's going to save. I wonder who he's going to heal. I wonder what miracle is going to happen. I trust the Lord. I trust God. Hallelujah. People will hoard things and hold on to things. And it gets them, those things get in the way of their relationship with the Lord. And you have to beware, my friends. You have to watch out because God can remove those things out of our lives. Because he loves you so much and he's so concerned about your relationship with him. I don't want anything to get in the way. It all belongs to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I give you my all, Lord. Will you give him the, the two mites? Will you give it to him tonight? Just take the two mites by faith. I, it represents everything I have. I give it to Jesus. How about the fish and the loaves? Will you give it to Jesus tonight? Are you willing to buy the alabaster box of costly oil? A year's worth of wages, I give it. It represents everything that I have. I give it to Jesus. I give it to the Lord. Amen. I give it to him. Praise the Lord. Just pray. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm just going to ask you. I'm not going to ask you to come up front tonight. I'm just going to ask you to pray. Just give it to the Lord tonight. God, I give you my heart. Lord, I've been living for myself. I Listen, it's going to take great courage. I've been living for me. I've been living for myself. But I give it to God. I give it all. My possessions belong to Christ. And he can use it for whatever he wants and for his glory. 
If God can use a man with a stick, I know that God can use me. If God can use a man with a stick, he can use this church. He can use my family. He can use my life. He can use this ministry. Praise the Lord. Give us Shamas, Shamgars today. Give us Shamgars today that will believe God. By faith, by faith, that's what I am. By faith, I'm trusting God. By faith, I'm believing I'm a Shamgar. Hallelujah. I'm not running from the enemy. I'm not giving in to the enemy. I'm trusting the Lord. Father, Father God, touch the hearts of your people tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, in your own way, just pray. Surrender it to the Lord right now. You know what it is. Because the Holy Spirit is going to bring it to the forethought of your mind. Those things we put before Jesus. You know what it is. The Holy Ghost. He will show you. The Spirit of Truth will reveal it to you. What are you putting before Christ? Is it you? Is it things? Is it people? Is it time? Is it pleasure? What am I putting before God? It all belongs to Him. Praise God. My Lord, hallelujah. Father, we love you tonight and we praise you. Now listen, I want you to find someone tonight before we leave. And I just think there's such blessing in this, but I want you to pray for somebody tonight. I want you to pray with somebody tonight. I want you to lift them up before the Lord with love and with compassion. I just want you to pray for one another tonight. Pray for your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. Because all of us are in a fight. All of us are in a battle. All of us are trying to live this Christian life. All of us want to live for the Lord. Especially I know you folks tonight. I realize that. Father, I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray for all those here tonight. I pray for those that are watching live. I pray that you would touch them, bless them, help them, strengthen them, Father. God, I pray in the name of the Lord, God, my brothers and my sisters, that they'll just live for you, God, with a willing heart, with a spirit of God, with a spirit of heart that says yes to God, yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, whatever you ask, I'm willing. God, if you can use a man with a stick, I know that you can use me. I'm willing, God. I'm a willing vessel. And I say yes to the Lord. My life belongs to you. My possessions belong to you. My heart belongs to you. My all belongs to you. Oh, Father God, I live for the Lord. No greater life, church. I live for God. Now God will bless you. I give it all to God. Now God will bless you. I say yes to Jesus. Now Jesus will bless you. Now he'll help you. Now he'll multiply. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. I give it to God, I believe. Oh, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I give it all to Jesus. I bow down to him. I surrender now. Lord God, I put no other relationship before you. I put no other person before you. I don't put any other thing before you. I give it all to Christ. Come on, church. Mean it in your heart. Believe God. Don't just say the words, but believe it in your heart. Believe with faith and conviction. I give it all to Christ. I belong to Him. My life belongs to Him. I don't do what I want to do. I do what He wants me to do. Hallelujah. And I'll use it how He wants me to use it. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord. Bless them tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, praise God. Praise God. It's a blessing being saved. It's a blessing being a Christian. His word's a blessing. His presence is a blessing. It's awesome because you never know what God's going to do. You never know. Hallelujah. You never know. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.
thank you, church. I feel like that I have been blessed and anointed by the congregation tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Get through this little valley. Get on the other side of it. Heal up and keep preaching. Right? Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, folks. Amen. Let's stand together tonight. Lord, bless your people, the congregation. May they go in peace. Lord, I pray that your face would shine upon them with every glory of the Lord. Fill them, Lord, with your presence. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that they just go out in this world with a reflection of Christ upon them. Father God, I know that you love them and you've got such a purpose and a plan. Thank you for this wonderful, loving body of Christ. Bless them now and may you be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Remember me at 6 o'clock Tuesday morning. 6 o'clock Tuesday morning. I'll be going into the riverside. So remember me, okay? Amen. <laughs>